Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a simple app using local storage um, on Swift UI for an iOS app. So I'm going to create like a little to do or task list app where you can enter in a task and then you can either choose to delete it or update the task. When you create this default Swift UI template, you're going to get just a um, template which gives you an example of what a Swift UI might look like. We're going to change that once it loads. You also get a nice preview there that responds as you make changes. We want an H stack because we're going to want to have a text input, so a text field alongside a button which will be used to add the text or add the task to a list, and then we'll display that list. We're also going to have a state field here that's going to hold our new task that we want to save. And I'll reference that from our text field so that the task is displayed on screen. Add your task will be the placeholder text. You can see that on screen now in the center. I'm going to add a button. And on click of this, we're basically going to save that task and we're going to clear out that new task so that's empty and another task can be added. We're only going to do that if the new task is not empty. I'm going to add a comment here for add task at the moment because I'm going to go ahead and add that in a second. But for now, I'll just set that new task uh, state variable back to be an empty string. I also need to show how my button's going to look, so I'm just going to add a text here and put the text add. You can see my button shows there. Typing in a task. And if I click add, it disappears. But it isn't persisted anywhere because I have not yet implemented the logic to save it in local storage. Now I'm going to have a task view model and that's going to be responsible for all my logic for saving and updating and deleting tasks. I'm going to create this new class task view model. It's going to be an observable object. What that means is basically it can be that state variable um, in the content view. And this published keyword basically indicates that if there are any changes to this tasks list here, it will update the content view that is um, has the task view model as a state variable. We're going to start off with an empty array of tasks by default. The first function I'm going to add inside this task view model is the ability to add a task. So to do that, I'm going to want to take in some task as a string. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and add that to the array of tasks. Then I'm going to call a function called save tasks, which I'm going to implement in a second, and that's going to handle the actual um, saving to local storage. So I'm going to use the default standard and I'm going to set. What I'm going to pass in is my tasks and I'm going to give it a key that I want to save it under. So I'm going to make that tasks. I just need to add that missing argument label for key. So it recognizes the tasks string. Heading back over here, I can now go ahead and update this add task code to actually um, call the view model add task. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and add in a new state object. And I'm going to have my view model set here. Here I can just call view model dot add task and I just pass in the string. I'm showing you it now and it would add it and save it. You obviously can't see that it's saved at the present because I don't have a list so the next step will be adding in a list so that it is able to be displayed. For my list, I'm just going to go through each of my view model tasks and I'm going to go ahead and create a row for them. I'm just going to make that a simple text. And I'm going to go ahead and add a task. You can see that's reflected. When I tried to add an empty string, it wouldn't let me. Another thing you could do is add a little error message if that happened so that the user was aware that they can't add an empty string. I just wanted to show you that um, it's not actually loading the task at present. So you notice when I edited that um, content view, the task disappeared. So we need to add a function to load the tasks. So this time we're going to let load the tasks from the user defaults and we'll use that same key that we used previously to save the tasks. Then we can set this task to be the save task that we've loaded from user defaults. Now when the actual view appears, we're going to want to go ahead and load those view model tasks so that they can display on screen. You can see they're displaying on screen now.
Next up, we're going to work on deleting tasks. So for this, we're just going to call this delete task and we'll just pass in an index set and then we will remove at that offset. Then we're going to go ahead and save those tasks so that the change is persisted. So on my row, I'm going to add an on delete operation. And it will call the view model dot delete task. So let's slide to delete. You can see that I've now deleted one of my rows and I'm going to make an edit to show that it won't come back when I make a change and the tasks are reloaded and you can see that it isn't reloaded because it's been deleted and persisted. And I'm just showing you adding more. I'm going to quickly open up the real device just to show you, well, the simulator to show you on the simulator as opposed to the preview. I just want to show you that it functions the same way. Generally, most of your testing can actually be car carried out in the preview now, and it's quite effective. So what I did was I added a task in the simulator, and then I closed the app, and when I reopen it, you can see that high has persisted here. I can delete and I can um, add more tasks as well. Closing that once again and reopening and you can see once again just the um, added task that hasn't been deleted is um, retained. So our persistence is working here. Next up, I want to show you how to edit. We're going to add another state variable that's going to be the editing index. And when the editing index is set, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to show the text update instead, as we want to indicate to the user that it's a bit of a different state than um, just adding. And we'll also pre-populate that text field. There are a couple of changes we're going to need to make to our list view now. And that's just to allow us to get the actual index that we're on when we are editing. We're also going to want to add a spacer and a button. The action of the button is going to be to edit the tasks, but I'm going to leave that empty for now. And I'm going to add a image for the button, and it's going to just be of the pencil icon. You can specify the color and change if you want. I'm specifying the color blue. Because it's now ver vertically stacked, I want to actually make it horizontally stacked so it looks like a row. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. You can see that looks much more like you'd expect a typical UI to look. Now I'm going to have to go ahead and implement the um, editing. So what I'm going to do is I am setting the new task to be the task and it updates the text field. And then I'm setting the index, editing index to be the index of the row that I'm editing, which will mean that I can update it later on. So you can see that currently when I update, it just adds a new one. And that's because I haven't updated my action for my add or update button. So I'm going to go ahead and update that logic now. So 
So if there is an editing index, I'm going to go and edit. Otherwise, I'm going to go and add the task. I can still keep that clearing the task to an empty string outside of the if statement because that's going to happen regardless of whether I'm editing or adding a task. But now when I have a editing index, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to clear that out once I've done my editing and I'm also going to need to yeah, do my editing. So I'll call viewmodel.edit. Sorry, I'm going to call that viewmodel.update task. I'm going to pass the editing index as I need that to know which um, task element to update in the task list. And I'm also going to pass the task string. I don't currently have that um, function available inside my task view model, so I'm going to go ahead and add my update task function now. My index is an integer and my task is a string. Just going to make sure that my task contains the index so I don't have any issues there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the update. So I've set that index of the task to be the new task string. And I'm having a few little errors here. Going back here, I can see that I need to pass in, um, set the um, index as at, because that's what I'd named it in the as a parameter. And here I'd actually called it index and, and um, was using editing index. So I've had a little bit of an issue there, and I also need to update this to task, because that was what I called the parameter. Sometimes live coding doesn't go well. Cool, so now I can see all my list items again. I can go ahead and edit them. And when I update, it should update. And you can see it's updated inside that list. I could do the same with another one, and it should also update that. If I head on over to this, I can update here just to show it's persisted. You can see those tasks are still there, so it is persisted. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content. All my code will be available on GitHub.